Search results are really important to people that operate a variety of different types of website. Think about it. You're going somewhere, you're looking for a restaurant. You go online, search restaurants in Buffalo. You might not go past the first page of results. Being on that first page for a business, for a restaurant in the area that you're going to is therefore really, really important. It can make the difference between business succeeding and being found by a lot of people who are using these sort of online systems and not. As a result, there's a fair amount of interest in, in uh, improving search results, and they, they, some of those things fall into the category of manipulating search results. So we're going to talk about that. That's sometimes referred to as black hat search engine optimization. So in contrast to white hat search optimization, which would be doing things that the search engine providers are okay with, that are designed to make it more likely that someone who's interested in the page will find it, black hat techniques tend to focus on doing things that are kind of the Opposite. First of all, search engine providers don't condone these techniques. And second of all, they're really sort of designed to trick people into landing on the site. You know, to take a site that's really not that helpful or not that valuable and make it seem more important than it actually is. So what are some of the ways I can do this? Um, one of the most interesting and probably most effective ways of manipulating search results is if you can find a uh, reputable website to link to your website. Because remember, to some degree, the reputation of a site in some search algorithms is determined by the reputations of the sites that link to it. So if I can find a, um, a high, sort of high reputation site, you know, a site that's considered valid to link to my site, then I'm good and this will increase my site's uh, prominence in the search rankings. Now, you can understand why this would happen, right? So let's go back to the restaurant example. If my restaurant appears in you know, Eat Out Buffalo or something like that, that might be considered by a search engine to be a high reputation site for this particular query. And so if my re restaurant is reviewed, then that's a good thing. You know, that might mean that the restaurant is pretty good and it should appear higher in the search results. Um, however, if I can somehow just pay that site or trick them or in some way to link to my site, then that can increase my site's prominence without actually uh, in an inappropriate way. So there's a bunch of other things I can do to the contents of my site, right? So this is, you know, uh, you know, finding a high reputation site to link to mine. Um, the other things I can do are there's something known as keyword stuffing. These all involve manipulating the contents of the site itself. So sites include in the, in the head a keywords tag, and those keywords are supposed to be indications to the search engine about what the page is about. And in certain cases, people have thought that just sticking a lot of stuff into the keywords and putting all sorts of things in there might help, or there might be some magic keyword that really boosts my things in the search results. I think a lot of this is sort of nonsense, but it's one thing that people will try. Um, here's another thing that's interesting. How about invisible text? So if I want my site to look really important or to look like it's about something, I could stick a lot of text in there that's invisible to the user. So despite the fact that the user can't see this text, the robot may not notice that. The robot may grab the page and because the text is made invisible by JavaScript or the robot doesn't understand how CSS applies to this particular part of the page, it might think that this text is part of the page content. And in that way, I can use invisible text to jam a bunch of extra content into my page in hopes that it'll make the page look more valid or more important or more interesting to the search engine. Um, a similar technique that's kind of interesting is you know, something that you might refer to as a, a bait and switch. So I can take a page, I can make it look appropriate to a particular search term, wait until the page appears in the results for that term, and then totally change the contents of the page. So, and, and maybe set up the page so it can't be indexed anymore or something like that. So this would be, you know, I'm looking for a particular thing online, I'm trying to answer a question, I follow a link to a particular site, and I get there and it's like, this isn't even about what I want, it's like an advertisement or something, who knows? Probably you would use this to stuff ads or sort of stupid things online. Um, so there's a lot of this that goes on. Uh, search engines, I think, you know, you can make up your own mind about whether they're doing a good job about fighting back against this sort of thing. Certainly they're aware 
aware of it. They do a lot to sort of combat this. You know, you can imagine invisible text trying to understand what things are visible on the page, uh, keyword stuffing, just using the page contents more in the search process rather than relying on keywords. Uh, this sort of thing, just making sure that I update my index periodically. So if I haven't seen a site for a couple of weeks, I might just you know start to push that site farther and farther down in the results to make sure that the site's contents haven't totally changed. So there's a variety of things that search providers do to try to combat against these techniques, but there is still this sort of persistent myth or persistent desire out there in the world of people who build websites that there are these magic tricks that you can somehow apply to your site that'll really boost it up in the Google search results or the Bing search results or whatever and will cause good things to happen to you and to your website.